Did we do it? I think we did. That's right, and hey guys, welcome to the Working Money Channel. We hit 70,000 subscribers yesterday, just hours after I was getting blasted in my comment section in yesterday morning's video. Working Money, how can you be so tight? You're only 200 subscribers away. Just give away those Ledger Nanos anyway. Literally a few hours later, I did reach that 70,000 target. Uh, so we were cutting it close and I wasn't sure what to do. And I've been getting an outpouring of congratulations from uh, some people in the XRP community. Martin Volk, uh, Ian Northing, DJ Peter Vass, we've got the Cryptic Poet. Uh, you know, a lot of contributors here on Twitter, a lot of active members in the XRP community. Uh, some people saying, I'm tired of you speaking about the ledgers every single gosh darn day um but thanks guys i really do appreciate the congrats and uh yeah i'm not going to talk about this anymore but i do still have to pick a day and um i wasn't going to do it today because i feel like i was throwing out so many dates i wasn't sure if we were going to hit that number and so i was saying well i'll give it away on the second but i think it's fair now we have hit seventy thousand, uh and i'm gonna stick to monday i know i did also mention monday in monday's video the morning video what you guys will have to do if you want a chance to win the ledger nano is basically go to the morning's video and in the comment section all you type is ledger please and on Tuesday, I'm going to use a random comment selector and I'm going to select two winners for the Ledger Nano S. So on Monday's video, you just have to comment in the comment section, Ledger, please. And uh, in Tuesday morning's video, that's when I'm going to make the selection and announce the winner. I know, I'm sorry guys, all the dates have gotten messed up uh, just because I didn't know if we were going to reach the threshold and uh, sure enough, we did only hours after I had mentioned that we had not reached our threshold. Bear with me guys, I'm sorry. Uh, this was a bit clunky this time. I mean, it is also a holiday week so I do want to give some people some time uh, to watch this video to know what they have to do in order to win that Ledger Nano S or X. All right, now that we got that out of the way, wanted to mention the crypto market. Bitcoin is looking like it is continuing to rally higher. Uh, so we are seeing Bitcoin right now sitting at about $59,500 and uh, we're getting very, very close to that all-time high for Bitcoin of about 61700 It seems as though many cryptocurrencies are doing fairly well. We are now above the $1.9 trillion mark for the entire cryptocurrency market. And guys, look at Bitcoin dominance slipping down to 57.8%. Bitcoin is up by 1.5%, Ethereum up by 3.3%, Binance Coin up by over 10%, uh, Cardano up by 1.76%, we got XRP up by 4.11%, trading at about 59 cents. Let's take a look at XRP here on the charts, uh, and we can see, guys, this is XRP on the hourly, we can see XRP has been faring extremely well over the last few days. Uh, we are seeing this upward trajectory for XRP, and, um, you know, it's, it's only a matter of time, I think, before we see that blow off top. I don't know if you guys caught that video I did about those four indicators uh, that really suggest that XRP is poised for this next breakout. Um, and you know what I say, the more indicators we see, the better. Well, now there is a fifth indicator that I'm going to get to later on in this video. Uh, Michael at Val5Links posted this. So this with regards to the entire cryptocurrency market. This is definitely going to have an effect on altcoins. We got news about Goldman Sachs just the other day, and now this American investment bank Morgan Stanley plans to allow a dozen of its funds to invest in Bitcoin via cash settled futures and the great scale Bitcoin trust. So more big banks jumping on the Bitcoin bandwagon. Here's a quote. Certain funds may have exposure to Bitcoin indirectly through cash settled futures or indirectly through investments in Grayscale Bitcoin trust or rather GBTC, a privately offered investment vehicle that invests in Bitcoin. Uh, the bank also noted that investments in Bitcoin, be it via futures or GBTC, will be organized through its wholly owned subsidiary, an exempted company under the laws of the Cayman Island. In its filing, Morgan Stanley listed 12 funds that it plans to expose to Bitcoin, including Advantage Portfolio, Asia Opportunity Portfolio, Counterpoint Global Portfolio, Development Opportunity Portfolio, Global Advantage Portfolio, Global Opportunity Portfolio, and others. Um, I think the point I'm making here, though, uh, is that Morgan Stanley, yet another one of the major U.S. banks investing in Bitcoin. I want to keep moving though, because that's not the only thing that's happening. Michael B here posting this on Twitter. Cryptocurrency exchange has been privately valued at $67.6 billion. Yes, we're talking about Coinbase here and we have an official day for the listing, April 14th. So in about two weeks, Coinbase is going public on the Nasdaq. So Coinbase Global Inc. plans to go public in a highly anticipated direct listing on April 14th. The U.S.'s largest cryptocurrency exchange said on Thursday, uh, Coinbase was founded in 2012 uh, and provides a wide range of services for institutional and retail clients in the crypto markets. Guys, do you understand how important this is going to be for crypto? And it's happening in two weeks. Will we see the altcoin rally happen uh, once we start to see FOMO piling into Coinbase? Let's not forget institutional 
money, the stock exchange, traditional investors seeing the link there, right? Coinbase, cryptocurrency. Ah, maybe I should invest in cryptocurrency. Uh, it gets the wheels in motion. It gets people's perception on cryptocurrency even more favorable. And therefore you see money keep flowing in. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see this number go to $2 trillion very, very soon. You know, some are even predicting that we might see a $3 trillion cryptocurrency market by the end of 2021. And again, I want to reiterate one of the things we have to keep paying attention to, you guys, is Bitcoin dominance, 57.8%. Let me just bring up Bitcoin dominance here on the chart. You guys can see it is continuing to move downward. Okay, uh, these lines were from before, obviously, uh, but you guys can see that Bitcoin trend continuing to move downward. And uh, the more it moves down, obviously, uh, the more altcoins have gained dominance over Bitcoin. And uh, that's when we're going to see altcoin prices really rise. So that trend continuing to move downward. We were consolidating in this zone for a couple of months, uh, but we are now seeing Bitcoin moving downward. Uh, so something to pay attention to. I also saw this from XRP underscore crow on Twitter, 50 plus ripple slash XRP links and resources for the newcomers in the space. So if there are newcomers in the space and you um, are looking to do more research, uh, XRP underscore Crow has provided you a web page that I will link in the description of this video with everything you need to know. Official Ripple websites, Interledger, uh, we got the Ripple Drop, uh, Reddit, YouTube. There's so much stuff up here. So much great information. Official XRPL Explorer, XRPL documentation. I mean, uh, you probably want to take these uh, a step at a time because this goes quite deep. Uh, the Pay ID website, Spring initiative which is now ripple x coil blogs uh so lots here to peruse uh and you know even for the people who have been in this space for a while sometimes it's good to just go back over this and uh, take a look at some of these resources that we haven't seen for a while like for example rppl.info is a great resource that i haven't talked about in a while and i don't know how up to date it is today uh but at the time i believe it was in 2018 this was a list of all the ripple partners either people uh testing or using uh x current x rap so yeah, it does look a little dated at this point, but it gives you guys a sense of how many partnerships there were, and in some cases, uh, giving you guys the dates, what countries they are in, when they were founded. Uh, so lots of information here. I love this website here. I wish it was, uh, I, I don't think it's updated with today's information, but it is a great website and uh, lots of other great websites here on this channel. So I uh, just wanted to thank uh, XRP underscore Crow for posting that. Now, XRP leaving escrow on the first of the month, of course, yesterday was April 1st, and 900 million were put back. So this first story up here is uh, just about um, some XRP that has been moved over the XRPL. But I wanted to get down here on April 1st, Ripple Labs made a regular automated withdrawal of an astounding XRP amount, 1 billion, which happens every single month. Uh, this always takes place on the first day of the new month. Ripple has been doing this for several years now, as we know. Over the past couple of years, the majority of the XRP released from escrow has been going back to be locked. Uh, and it has usually been around 800 million. This time, Ripple has put 900 million XRP back in escrow escrow, which leaves a remaining 100 million XRP in the ecosystem. Of course, we aren't seeing the uh, quantity of real world utility that I think Ripple had wished they would see by this point in time. I know they likely uh, weren't expecting uh, an SEC lawsuit to stifle their progress. And so uh, I have a feeling this is why we're not seeing the uh, quantity of XRP stay in the ecosystem and, um, you know, having it go back into escrow. I don't know if there's more to it than that. If you guys have any idea, please do put it down in the comment section. We got this from me in Northing as well with regards to Brad Garling as he was making the rounds. Uh, doing some interviews as of late, and uh, this was one he did with Julia Chatterley. Now, Julia Chatterley asked Brad, what is going to happen if Ripple loses the legal battle against the SEC? What's going to happen to Ripple? Do they have a contingency plan? Are there some other ways that they can conduct business? Well, Garling has expressed confidence that Ripple will win, but did not rule out the possibility that the court will disagree, saying, uh, I think we will prevail, but as you say, there is a chance that the court system does not go this direction. At the same time, Garling has emphasized that Ripple continues to grow beyond the United States. So XRP implementation is still going to be used outside the United States, um, but we're going to have to see. And again, guys, we have to remember it's not about is XRP a security today? I think it's very, very apparent that it is not. And many lawyers have even uh, discussed this topic. It's about how Ripple used XRP before and not so much proving that XRP is a security today. The sales of XRP from December 2020 onward, clearly not securities. And maybe even 
from before that. Again, we got to let the course decide. The good news for Ripple is that we continue to sign customers. We sign over 20 new financial institutions around the world since the SEC filed their lawsuit, this coming from Brad Garlinghouse, and I think we will see the network grow very rapidly in non-US customers. The challenge is that it drives blockchain and crypto innovation outside the US, which I think is not in the interest of the United States. Chatterley probed asking what Ripple would do if it's US operations in the event of a defeat, uh, bringing up alternative solutions specifically for US customers. Garlinghouse answered in the affirmative, explaining further that certainly uh, could be a part of the solution, but we could do that. We always thought about our product as how to solve a customer's problem first and foremost, and I think that served our growth, and it's the reason we saw large activity, billions of dollars in transactions across RippleNet. There was also some discussion about uh, stifling US innovation and um, you know the United States as a whole with regards to cryptocurrency as that main topic. Uh, and again, Brad just going back to this idea that this is not good for cryptocurrency as a whole. Not even so concerned about Ripple particularly and the XRP token. It's only Bitcoin and Ethereum that have the clarity. Recently, the SEC just filed another lawsuit against Library. So the, the entire crypto market in the United States is at stake here. And um, it's good. The, the positive news, and uh, Brad even reiterated in this interview, that their lawyer, Ripple's lawyers, one of Ripple's lawyers, I believe it was Mary Jo White is her name, uh, was formerly a lawyer for the SEC. And she basically says the SEC has this dead wrong. So another part of this interview uh, that I just wanted to bring up here was this part. Let me play you guys this. You know, a lot of the XRP holders that I've spoken to are upset about the personal aspect of this claim too, and that the SEC says you sold millions of dollars worth of XRP while making ambitious statements about Ripple's progress. Brad, how do you respond to those allegations? Could you have been more transparent? It's okay to diversify holdings into other things. You just need to be more transparent. You know, I'm really looking forward to the facts coming out in the court case. You know, this is something I haven't commented on publicly because the, the, the wheels of justice kind of move slowly. And I think it's important that we get the facts out. We've heard one side of the story from the SEC. In fact, I think as the, the facts come out, what we'll find is that we have been, Ripple and I have been as more transparent than anyone else in the crypto industry about our activity, about what we're doing. And so, again, I, I find a certain irony in that the SEC would bring a lawsuit against us particularly personally, because what they're saying is that not just that we should have known and we should, we've should we acted in bad faith, when the SEC themselves haven't really said, well, they know for sure that XRP is a security. In their own court filings, they've said that the court will determine that, which of course brings a contradiction that if the court's gonna determine that, how could I personally have known that the SEC would view XRP as a security? <laughs> exactly. How could he have known if the SEC doesn't even know themselves? This is a very great point brought up by Brad Garlinghouse. And, um, you know, he's confident. I sense the confidence. Uh, one side of the story, as Brad mentions, uh, you know, we haven't heard Ripple and Chris and Brad's side of the story yet. So that is eventually going to come out. And so what is this next indicator that we need to look at for XRP price? Right now trading at about 58.1.581. And, uh, you know, as I said at the beginning of this video, XRP has been doing great over the last few days, trending upward. And so you may ask me, working money, what is this fifth indicator that is suggesting that XRP is going to break out? Well, I'll tell you what it is. So this is the XRP chart on the daily, and I wanted to give you guys a very broad picture of the XRP chart. Uh, of course, I'm going to go over some of the other indicators that I spoke about. And again, if you guys didn't catch that video with the uh, four indicators, I will link it up here in the top right hand corner. So just real quickly, let's go over them very, very fast. Uh, this fractal here, okay? This fractal here before the move up is very, very similar to what we are seeing over here on the chart. Again, for more detail on this, refer to that other video. The second indicator that I wanted to mention is if you take this fractal and you throw a Fibonacci on there, uh, and this is going to, it's gonna be very difficult to see from here. You can see the 0.5 Fibonacci level, and I'm not doing this justice, but the 0.5, I think you gotta take my word for it or refer to that video. The 0.5 was the level where XRP found its bounce and then shot up to all time high. And as you guys can see here, this similar fractal is showing the same thing. I throw a Fibonacci on this similar fractal. It hit the 0.5 and now it is moving upward. Again, it's very difficult to see on this chart, but uh, you got to take my word for it or take a look at that video that I did earlier this week. Zooming in on the XRP trend over the last few months now, guys, check this out. An inverted head and shoulders. You got the shoulder, the head, the next shoulder. So boom, boom, boom. 
What happens after that? Generally, this is an indicator that we are going to see a move to the upside. And when you take a look at this pattern over here, uh, again, this is XRP on the daily, and um, I could put it on the hourly, but I'm gonna leave it on the daily because you can still see what I'm going to show you guys here on the daily. You can see uh, if I put a trend line here, the bottom of the trend, you can see higher lows are being formed and a trend line here. At the top, you can see this ascending triangular formation checking out, which also gives us an indication that we are going to move to the upside. And the fifth indicator brought to us by Straight Up XRP. We now got at least five indicators that XRP price is ready to explode. We are getting so close, my friends, and what he's demonstrating here is brilliant news. This is the XRP dominance chart, guys, on the daily. And as you can see, we are now basing in the same support level as we were over here for XRP dominance specifically. So let's bring that chart up here, XRP dominance. Okay, and I'm gonna put this chart on the weekly. Uh, we are going to zoom out yet again. And you guys can see here on the weekly, he had it there on the daily, but you guys can see even on the weekly, we are uh, witnessing something very, very special here. Basing coming right back into this support level before XRP really took off. So what is this suggesting guys? Let's take a look at the fractal pattern. Uh, I'm just gonna take this from here to here. And if I bring this fractal over, you can see that overlays quite nicely here on the XRP chart. We are seeing a similar pattern as we did in 2017 with regards to XRP dominance. And in 2017, when we hit that level of support, we saw XRP move to all time high. So could we see something similar guys very, very soon? This is a great indication of things to come again. Now we have five indicators demonstrating that the XRP chart is poised and ready to go on a tear. Wanted to thank Straight Up XRP for posting that, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. And guys, to win the ledger in Monday's video, comment down in the comment section. I'm going to pick the winners on Tuesday. I wanted to give everybody some time over the long weekend for a heads up. But anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one, guys.